So yeah, let's go. All right. So again, everyone, welcome. This is Jeannie Kitchens. I'm with Southern Illinois University Center for Workforce Development. We're a Credential Transparency Initiative partner. And we also have with us on the webinar today um, Bob Sheets, one of the project's co-directors. And um, as I mentioned, some of my technical team members, but also Stuart Sutton is on, and he is our metadata expert, and he will be handling part of this presentation today. What I'd like to do is introductions. Um, we, you know, we're all going to get to know each other uh, virtually, in a sense, and hopefully get to all meet each other in person if we haven't already uh, at some point. But if we could go around, and if I hope people are either connected by a microphone or connected by the phone, if we could do introductions and um, you know tell us your, who you are, the organization you're with, and I think it would be really good for everyone to know either the you know what you do that intersects with this work, or your interest in this work, or you know uh, why you want to be involved with this work. That would be really helpful. And why don't we do do it like this so people aren't talking over each other? So um, people who everyone has typed in their names into the roll call uh, pod, let's just start at the top and work our way down. Mike? Uh, Michael Parsons with SIUC, a solution architect with this project. Um, I'm Nate Argo with the CTI project. I'm a developer and uh, interfaces designer. I'm Stuart Sutton. I'm the managing director of DCMI, the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative. I'm uh, an, a retired professor at the University of Washington Information School. Um, I have interest, long-standing interests uh, that are related to what's going on here through my work with the ASN, the Achievement Standards Network. And I was the um, uh, principal data uh, architect on that project. Thank you. I'm Jerome Grimmer. I'm with the SIU Center for Workforce Development. And I'm an application analyst. And I'm going to be participating in the Credential Transparency Initiative project. Damon, do you have sound? Can you hear me, uh, Jean? Yes. Oh, excellent. Sorry, I uh, wasn't uh, sure I see sort of conflicting message on my machine here. Um, pleasure to be here, Jean. Thanks so much for the uh, introduction and the opportunity to be part of this. Uh, I'm with the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative. Um, we're very focused on doing research and development. Um, around learning technologies and uh, with the military in particular who have a need for greater understanding and uh, use of you know, these uh, shared meaning of credentials. And so uh, very uh, you know, to be able to be part of this. Uh, look forward to working with all of you who are working on uh, related efforts. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And Jeff, do you have sound? Yes. Can you hear me? Great. We can. This is Jeff von Munkwit Smith. I'm Assistant Vice President and University Registrar at Boston University for another six weeks or so. I'm representing ACRO, the American Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers. Um, served ACRO in various roles, including VP for information technology and president. I'm also working on a, a project with ACRO and NASPA, the uh, Student Personnel Association uh, that's funded by the Lumina Foundation on the comprehensive student record, working with uh, a dozen or so institutions. Great. Well, thank you. And and Lauren, hello. Do you have sound? Hmm. Lauren, we'll come back to you. Um, 
John. Yes, this is John Shockley from SRI International. I'm working on uh, the OpenNet-centric interoperability standards for testing and training project, or HONEST, out of uh, uh, OSD and Personnel and Readiness. It's a semantic technology tool uh, we've been uh, using and applying for decision making. Uh, and so we've been working a little bit um, early on, <clears throat> learned of the initiative, and are interested in seeing how our technology could apply. Uh, we also have uh, members of our team who've also worked on the learning uh, registry. Yes, you do. Yeah, thanks so much for joining. And uh, Jim. I'm Jim Goodell um, with QIP and CEDS, um, the Common Education Data Standards, and I lead the development of the standards. But I spend a lot of time um, helping to build bridges between CEDS and other standards organizations and initiatives, both within EdTech and other kinds of standards. Um, and um, a bunch of people on the call will um, know that um, this is an area of passion of mine, that we need authoritative uh, references to the competencies that, um, not just credentials, but also the competencies that underline those credentials. Um, so that we can make sense uh, of uh, the data that we use to inform learning and, and also uh, uh, make sense of what that means. Great. Thank you. And uh, what do we have next? Rob? Do you have sound, Rob? We don't hear you, so we need to come back to Lauren and Rob and make sure you're you're unmuted if you're on a phone, um, if you're connected by mic, we're not picking you up. So let's just go ahead and move down and let's come back and go ahead and speak up though uh, if you uh, um, when you do get sound. And then Furkan. Furkan. Hi, this is uh, I'm Furkan. I'm a partner at Extension Engine, and we're a um, actually a consulting company of about 200 people. And we specialize in building online learning platforms uh, for some institutions. So our level of interest, um, some of our clients are Harvard Business School. We built HBX, which is an alternative credential called CORE. Um, Harvard Medical School, we built HMX and run that for them. Um, but we also work with corporations, so Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, um, Fit Learning, and others. We've um, helped design and build their online learning platforms that oftentimes have alternative credentials. So we're really interested in finding a way um, to be able to um, take advantage of that and what you're doing. The second thing is we, we also um, have a, a, an R&D uh, initiative that we started about a year ago to develop a knowledge graph authoring tool called TALC, which allows institutions to uh, create uh, and manage the uh, competencies and subcompetencies and prerequisites and other interactive uh, networks between the knowledge graph. And that's something that Dr. Sheets and Dr. Crawford and you've discussed about potentially being something that could intersect with the, uh, the initiative. So those are our two areas of uh, interest. Super excited and thanks for uh, inviting us. Well, that, yeah, well that's very exciting. So, so thank you for joining. And Carla, hello. Hi there. Hi everybody. I'm Carla Casili and I am with IMS Global. And uh, some of you might know me from just a historical background of working in the open badges world and recognizing that um, alternative credentials are, are an up and coming initiative. So at IMS I'm focused on the currency framework, which is a, in some ways kind of a, a little mini version of the work that's taking place with CTI, starting to look at how can we more fully flesh out the criteria portion of the Open Badges specification so that there is a stronger framework that people can begin to build from. And then additionally, there are other initiatives in addition to the CTI, also the connecting credentials work that I'm, I'm working with, as well as the ACE work, which is the connected credentials. And I'm sure at some point somebody's going to mention the W3C credentials initiative um, taking place as well. So all of those things are related to the work that we're accomplishing and super excited to be a part of this conversation. Well, well thank you very much. Um, hi, Alexander. 
Hey everyone, um, I'm Alexander Repack and I'm the Director of Engineering at Credly. And uh, Hi. John? Hi, this is John. I'm the um, CLO with Credly and I'm very happy to be here. Oh, uh, we got some uh, um, reverb there, John, when you were talking, so I don't know if you're on the phone or the microphone. If you're on the phone, make sure your speakers or your microphone's muted. But thanks, welcome. And hi, Joe. Joe, do you have sound? We'll give Joe a minute. Um, and I see Lauren. Thanks for typing in the um, chat. Sorry you're having you're not able to connect your um, microphone. If you want to call in, you know it's totally up, up to you, or just use the chat. Um, but thanks for I, for I called in. I'm I'm, I'm oh, here. Huh? I called in. <laughs> I don't okay, know what well, was going on with my mic, but it wasn't working. So. Oh, darn it. Yeah, but anyway, I'm, I'm with the Department of Labor. I, I work with Pam Frugally, um, and we have the electronic tools in our area, uh, ONET, Career One Stop, um, the Industry Competency Model website. And so that's why we're here. That's why we're interested. We have a couple of different tools that um, contain information related to, to credentials. And so um, we're excited to be a part of the, the initiative. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining. And darn it, Joe, yeah, I don't, um, I, I, have at a loss as to why you're not able to connect the microphone. Um, maybe after this we can get together, we can test out a couple of things. But let's go on, then we'll circle back to Joe. Hello, Joel. Hi, everyone. Joel Hernandez here. I'm the CEO and CTO of Illumin. We're very active in the IMS standards uh, and as a curriculum and assessment management platform for the big community colleges. This is obviously a, a really big area of interest and support for us. Well, thank you. And hi, Jonathan. Hey, Jean. It's uh, Jonathan here. Good to see you. Um, uh, so I'm Jonathan Finkelstein of, uh, of Credly. Um, pleased to be part of this. Uh, we are focused on helping make digital credentials uh, that are earned uh, by people around the world uh, transparent and marketable and useful. And uh, a lot of the uh, uh, folks who issue on Credly uh, would certainly um, uh, benefit from the initiative that we're all part of today. So glad to be here. Excellent. Thank you. And, you're, and thank you for your well-represented group. Appreciate that. And uh, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Gene. Hi, all. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Terrific. I'm the CBE facilitator for IMS Global. Uh, so I focus on competency-based education. And we have a couple of initiatives that are very relevant to your work. Uh, one is a focus on building interoperability standards between higher ed platforms uh, to support competency-based ed. We have some very active projects going on in that regard. And, and then also we have an extended transcript for competency-based ed, which we've recently published a prototype for that um, is both linked to a digital badge and also formed in a way that that's very consistent with, uh, you know, the web-based uh, link data. So we're, we're very happy to be here and, you know, be part of the new age of uh, digital credentials. Well, thank you. And, and Phil uh, Barker, who gets our Farthest Distance Away Award. Hi, Phil. Are you, do you have sound? I hope I have sound, too. Uh, yes, I'm in Barker from here at Watts University in Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, I also work for... Can everybody hear Phil? No. Nope. Um, Phil, like, highness, I think I heard you talking, but we weren't picking you up. Sorry. Super quiet, Carla says. Um, we want to make sure um, uh, Phil I I is, you know, calling in from the other side of the world, and we want to make sure we can here, Phil, because we were so grateful that, along with all of you, that he's he's participating. You want to give it another try, Phil? Okay, I've adjusted a few volume buttons. Is that a bit louder? Um, yes, beautiful. Okay, thank you, Jean. Yes, um, I'm Phil Barker from Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, Scotland, 
Um, I also work for CETUS, which is the UK's Centre for Education, Technology and Interoperability Standards. Most of my work in the past has been on metadata, and uh, I've seen a few friends here from that work, from the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative, for example. Um, and I've also done a fair amount of work on OER, Open Educational Resources, in the past. And increasingly, our work is involving linked data for education generally. Fabulous. I just can't express enough thanks to everyone and, and Phil just, you know, for uh, joining from the other side of the globe. And let's go back. Joe, were you able to call in? Yeah, hopefully you can hear me this time. Yes. Yeah, this, this is Joe Hobson. Uh, I'm with Navigation North. We build online systems such as CT Online, a digital chalkboard, and the new Smithsonian Learning Lab. And we also handle the support for the development and uh, community for the learning registry. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And I think there was only one other person. And so if I missed anyone, please let me know. But I know Rob, um, are, are, do you have sound now? Ah, none. Darn it. Sad yeah. face. Hey, oh, was that Rob? Yes. Yes, now we hear you. OK, good. OK, my name is Rob Trainer. I'm the Vice President of Technology for Credit Trust. We, are, we, we offer a SaaS solution to people that want to issue credentials and curate credentials. Um, all of our stuff is based on open standards, such as JSON-LD and the Open Credit uh, Initiative, which we are a founding member of. Uh, we've also been involved with IMS Global in Mark's project with the e-transcript and with Carla's uh, credentialing. Uh, project. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Did I miss anybody? And I do want to point and call out Bob Sheets because he didn't put his name in there, and Bob definitely needs to introduce himself. And then anybody else, I apologize if I missed you. Yeah, this is Bob Sheets. I'm uh, I'm with uh, I'm a research professor at George Washington Institute of Public Policy, and I'm happy to be part of the CTI team. Uh, most of my work. Uh, probably in the, future, in, the, in the short run will be uh, focused on the employer uses and applications. But I look forward to learning uh, more and hear the discussion. Great. Thanks, Bob. Um, are we good to go to continue? Did we, com did we cover everyone? OK, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video. You've probably seen enough of me. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and pull this chat up. So let's just keep everyone able to use their audio any point. We'll only mute if there's disruptive background noise. And um, Scarlett can keep an eye, eye out for that. We could use the chat. I want to encourage using the chat at any time. Today, our session is largely going to be Sorry about this, me talking. <laughs> but even better, it's Stuart doing a lot of talking. But we don't intend for all of the meetings to be just us talking. We really wanted to make sure that everybody affiliated with the group has, you know, a, the good solid baseline, you know, common knowledge of the background, the CTI. Um, structure, the TAC purpose and goals. We're going to talk about the TAC in detail, you know, where we are now in the process here meeting the first time. And um, we'll, look, we'll look at uh, the, the next steps going beyond today's meeting. So please do feel free to, you know, ask questions at any time, um, you know, without hesitation, use the chat, you know, speak up whatever um, appeals most to you. Now, for some of you, we've um, uh, intersected recently in various meetings or uh, even in, in Austin at the IMS Global Summit. A little bit of this will be uh, maybe a repeat for some of us, but um, we just thought it was really important to make sure that everybody has this background information and we're all, you know, kind of Go working from the same playbook, so to speak. So I want to begin by covering the CTI scope of work. So this, this is a project that's funded by the Luna Foundation. And it is began in July of 15. Um, we, you know, between just grants, you know, getting grants set up, 
um, and getting uh, you know our team in place and things like that. You know, we're really just getting started here, and the project goes through. Uh, it's a multi-year project, and our scope of work is identified in the Lumina grant. And the the scope of work is to develop the the metadata terms and the for credentials, credentialing organizations, quality assurance bodies as well that accredit, endorse, or approve those credentials. It is to create this voluntary web-based registry and to test it with roughly 100 pilot site partners. So while we have the TAC going, paralleling with that, we've been holding webinars um, and inviting pilot site partners. And those pilot site partners are organizations that hold and issue those credentials, or they are the quality assurance bodies. And then, and, and we need those as partners because we want to collaboratively, you know, get their credentials, get their credential information. Then we're going to develop and test software applications, and I'll tell, we'll talk more about that specifically as to what those applications are. Um, I always just say apps in an abbreviated version, and it would be web app, um, but we'll build off We'll build it so it could, you know, be web and mobile app, but that question always comes up, so wanted to mention that. So there's some work already done that leads up to where we are today, and um, Bob Sheets, who is, you know, with us today, is one of the key people behind this work that already has been done. Um, and some of you who have joined this group were part of that initial work, where basically a very large group of stakeholders. And there's a listing of them that was included in your invitation email um, from across organizations and across the nation was convened by George Washington University WorkCred um, slash ANSI, and research was done. So there were papers written, there was initial reviews and inventories of various um, schemas, frameworks, and identification of some initial ideas for those related properties and vocabularies for credentials, trust and quality, quality assurance, and competency frameworks. So there was quite a bit of, of research, there was quite a bit of, of discussion and interaction um, with the stakeholders who were involved in that initial work, and that led to Lumina, who also funded that first phase, uh, agreeing to fund the second phase of this pilot period. So in the, in the big picture, you know, what it looks like with this visual is that we're all co-engineering this together. So we're, you know, just getting the pilot uh, partners identified now, we've assembled our TAC, and we're going to be focusing on the, the, this domain here on the left, the credentials, quality assurance, trust and quality, competency framework slash resources, and um, we'll be doing the credential registry pilot with the credential directory app and designing up to three other apps, building them if we get additional funding. So when I'm talking about describing the um, credentials, uh, we're talking about you know the very broad range of credentials, including you know digital badges, and then ranging through diplomas onto um, industry certifications to post-secondary degrees, you know occupational licenses. So really. The full range of the various type of, of credentials, but we are also looking for a concentration in manufacturing, healthcare, and information technology, um, so we can have a good representative, um, you know, fairly large sample. We hope of a wide variety of credentials in these industries. Um, for testing the, the registry and the directory app. I mentioned that we're working with what we're calling pilot site partners. So those would be organizations that hold and issue credentials or quality assurance type organizations. And the approach that we're using with them is a services approach. 
We are not, at this time, we don't have subgrants to award. And so what we're, what we're offering is a free set of services to take their credential information and convert it into using the metadata infrastructure that Stuart will be talking about, then publishing it to the credential registry. And we'll talk about that more as how the credential registry acts as an intermediate step toward linked data, you know, based on the reality of where we are now and providing a means to get to, you know, that linked data vision of the future. And then <clears throat> we'll work with them to, you know, get their credential information, publish it to the registry, have them participate through a monthly webinar on um, you know the feedback process and then using a directory app that will spec out to be customized so each partner could have their own customized version of it of the app and then uh, having a written document so a document for each pilot site partner organization that would identify where they are now in terms of their you know online presence in terms of transparency from a technical perspective and from a transparency of information perspective and um, uh, you know, provide some, some steps and things that they can do to enhance um, their transparency and online presence. So the pilot sites, you know, it has to be a two-way communication um, between the pilot site partners and the CTI team, you know, for for this to work. So we provide the services. There's, you know, participation from the pilots where they're going to identify a couple of staff to work with us. Are going to have to give us access to the information, you know, minimally participate with those monthly um, sessions, provide us some feedback, and as a part of this project, there is a an evaluation framework. And so the evaluation will be looking across all aspects of the project and, and how it's going. And we can talk about that maybe in, the, in a, uh, a meeting or two ahead and get into that a little bit more. So, you know, just to expound just a smidgen more on this idea of these personalized roadmap documents that each organization will get, they'll be focused on how they can achieve over time um, ch by making changes toward, you know, linked data. And the basis of the um, roadmap discussion is the five-star rating of linked data. We wrote this a little bit differently than the standard kind of five-star rating language on the web only because the point here is to, even at one star, raise awareness and understanding of the vision for transparent credential and related assessment information. And so we're saying not only should the information be uh, transparent in terms of, you know, machine readability, but also in terms of information for humans being useful and including the related assessment information. Let me just pause right there for a second because I've covered a lot of territory and I think you know some of you have heard this um, from me before and hopefully you're thinking well you know she has the same story <laughs> so that's good um, but let me just pause here and let me just make sure that um, we're good to go so far with the information or does anybody have any uh, comments or questions This is Carla. I have a question. In particular, as it relates to things like badges, that uh, I think as we discuss the concept of credentials, you know, specifically because you referenced a star associated with the assessment, that in, and so what we're assuming there is that there's a there is a significant aspect of assessment that goes with these credentials. Is that accurate? 
that there is an assessment that goes with the credentials. Well, what we want to do is identify all of the potential, and you'll keep us hearing us use this word descriptors as um, uh, Stuart segues us to more appropriate um, metadata terms, but we want to identify all the potential ways of describing a credential. So may, they may not all have an assessment, um, but for those that do, we want to make sure we're identifying that full gamut of relevant um, information. Um, Bob, do you want to add anything to that, Bob Sheets? Yeah, I, I, yeah Jeannie, you, that was real well put. Uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that any type of credential can describe themselves with regard to a certain property, but we're not assuming that all credentials will have things like assessment. It's certain, also certain credentials may not declare any value in the labor market, for example. Okay, so we yep. want to have it so that any, any credential can describe themselves with regard to any property based upon what makes sense to that credential and what they want to declare to the, mark, to the, uh, to the world. Great, thank you. Thanks, Bob. Um, I see some typing going on, so we'll kind of keep an eye on the chat as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and move um, forward with just a little bit about this idea of a credential registry, because usually when we talk about that, somebody always asks the question, well, why do you need a registry if it's linked data? And, and so, you know, the, the reality is that now there is an expectation, well, we know that the pilot site partners will have a very broad spectrum of where they are in terms of how they present this information in a transparent way, both for us to just follow it and understand it and make really good use of it and for, you know, interoperability and machine readability and those sorts of things. So all along since the um, initial work with this project, there's been the registry. And Joe Hobson is on, and so is uh, Damon Reagan, who are both very familiar, and, and John Jonathan, too, with SRI, with the learning registry. And one of the things that we did early on was meet a lot with Steve Midgley, who, if those of you who know him, also has a uh, background with the learning registry. And using utilizing it as a the credential registry and the reason for that is because it is an existing open infrastructure we are funding the you know with funding and time limitations one of the things we want to and need to be able to do is utilize you know open the open infrastructure that's already there and um, uh, this slide identifies, you know, some of the um, attributes of the registry that just innately support this ability. Now, the registry currently is focused on learning resources and identifying those specifically. So we will have to do some things to um, specifically identify credentials. Um, but here we're talking about the, in particular, the um, format of the registry allowing for many different metadata schemas, um, which is advantageous to us, and there are existing APIs, and, and so we should be able to um, create new or modify uh, APIs to use with the learning registry. Um, and uh, adopted as a credential registry to meet these project goals and again as an intermediate step. And just a little bit more information, and this is because it always comes up. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a network of nodes and so we don't want uh, to portray this as a centralized database, but it does also inherently in its design um, support a network of nodes and um, currently that primary node is hosted by Amazon um, Cloud Web Services 
And those nodes, again, as a part of what they do, um, support replication and the ability to um, use a node. We can use a node specifically to kind of filter um, out things that we don't want or filter things that we want in. So we wanted to touch on that just a little bit. And as we are working on design, you know, we'll delve into that, that deeper. So we'll use the, um, the, the credential, what will become the credential registry, which is an open metadata repository. So we're not suggesting that we're uploading files to this registry. It is a metadata repository. That's what I wanted to point out here. And then here, I just want to point out that, again, this is a pilot, pilot for the registry and the directory app. And the other items here, the potential apps that have been identified based on the prior work and um, the desire for these apps um, include the credential value transfer app, a competency uh, authoring, that should say authoring, by the way, not authority, and employer signaling and talent pipeline app. And these have been identified through stakeholder meetings, you know, as broadly here describing what those apps would do, but we are collecting use cases and they do need to be designed. Okay, so I will stop there for a moment before we move on to the next section and ask again for any questions or and let me take a look in the chat here because do you want to ask your question about I, uh, about the apps? Yeah. Yeah, hi Jean. Um, this is a Furcon extension engine. I'm curious, I, I think you hinted at it, but the, so the, there's the registry and then the apps uh, on top of it, and presumably there's, um, and I, I think Dr. Sheets mentioned this um, at one point that the, it, it, it's envisioned to be an extensible, you know, quote unquote, app store with many apps on it. Is it? Um, do you know the, the API or the interface between the registry and the apps? Is that going to be developed to begin with, or is that going to come in? A, ah, a good question. You know what? We've got a we've got a couple of pictures, diagrams. Let's hold that until um, we get to those two diagrams because again. You know, we everything is in design. Now the learning registry exists and you know luckily have um, multiple people who are very familiar and could address any technical questions about it, but all aspects of everything, you know, between it, any kind of services, processes between it and the apps do not exist at this time and will be getting them and getting your feedback on all all of the that and yep oh hey hey Phil you have a question uh, yes Jean I, I, I want to ask it now because it might get embarrassing to ask it later um, what's actually going to be stored in the registry is it going to be information about credentials that are available for example saying that um, Harriet Watts University is offering a degree in a particular subject, or is it going to be inform information about credentials that individuals have? For example, saying that I have a degree oh, from. Well, Phil, that was an excellent university. question, and actually, um, further on back, when we get to Stuart, he has an in scope, out of scope um, slide, and it is the first half of your question. So it's dealing with the. Um, the, the, I am this organization and we offer these credentials, we have these credentials, um, not the um, here is my credential. And so that visual will definitely help with that, but that is an excellent question. There's no such thing as bad questions here. <laughs> hey Jim, so, you want to ask? The per personal data is... Excellent. Good. I've known I've known oh, Phil long okay. enough. Great now, lines. That That's what they say. It's true. Thanks, so. All right. So so let me. Uh, I'll I'll move on then. Um, so what what you're seeing here is, is the the structure. Um, we have a, a committee structure. Um, and to me, what this means is a lot of it's a feedback loop. So we're here 
staffing, um, we have our executive committee, we have a stakeholder advisory committee, we have an evaluation committee, you are the technical advisory committee, we have pilot site partners, we have potential to break this committee out into kind of subcommittees based on these kind of topical areas here, and all together it forms a collaborative. So the collaborative is not a separate group, it's not a separate committee, it is the input of all, and so it's just a giant feedback um, co-engineering process that we want to have in place here and um, I think that's the main you know takeaway I'd like everybody to have with that and then we have of course we have a timeline because we have a grant that ends and it has an end date so we have to have it all done by here and so what you're seeing here is really the, the the three big hunks that we already talked about, it's the working with the partners, it's the, um, the metadata infrastructure, the credential registry, and the one app, implementing it for the pilot and then just designing, getting some design work done for the three others. So with that said, you know, we are, I think with our scope and with our timelines, you know, part of the 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 um, the challenge will be, you know, of course, staying within scope and and the funding. You know, we're gonna we're going to be doing this, and and another reason to use the the learning the learning registry, right? Um, because we're gonna be limited by time and funds. So um, as part of um, things that have been happening now that I had mentioned, um, we have a pilot site partner questionnaire that's being developed. And all of you are, we're going to give you this questionnaire. Um, I, didn't, I thought it would be better to just give it to you after this meeting. And what we'll be doing is putting all these documents in a shared drive, or they'll be available through the technical um, planning website. Um, but this has been a work in progress. It's been through a few iterations now. And the point of the questionnaire is to inform the metadata, the vocabulary. Um, and so uh, it, it has a purpose of three categories of information that we want to get from the pilot site partners, including you know, the type of credential, the credentialing organization, what is inside the credential, so to speak, and other key characteristics or relationships about the credential. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted you to know that there is work that has been underway and it's a product of that initial work back when the research papers were done and it's been evolving since and going through kind of iterative changes and actually Bob Sheets who's on had wrote the the questionnaire so he can answer any questions or you may want to talk a little bit more about it but it also has um, the three major uses. So it is to help us make sure we're covering all of the information that is describing the credential with our description language, to also um, uh, explore availability and location of information. So we have to know where to get it, uh, how it's currently formatted, and that will be another very interesting aspect of this is looking at um, where things are now among these hundred credentialing partners and then looking at the data formats and the access. Again, expecting a very wide variety of access and a wide variety of existing formats and we're certainly not saying that any current format is right or wrong. We simply need to know what they are so we can then um, utilize the metadata infrastructure. Bob, is there anything you'd like to say about that, the questionnaire? No, I, I just wanted to, to, just to give an example, like when we did explore the documents on step one, for example, uh, even simple um, uh, properties of a credential, like type of credential, 
Uh, we had we looked at all the different initiatives going around that actually provide vocabularies for that. For example, we have IPIS, we have SES, we have ONET, we have uh, NCS has other surveys that, that ask people questions about credentials. So we had to look at all the different initiatives and then any other standardization body out there that has uh, tried to put uh, some sort of uh, vocabularies together for any of the properties that we're looking at. We had to review all of those and identify where what we had to build from. That we don't want as uh, we're trying to do is just build from what's already existing. So that's the process we tried to go through early on in looking at these different properties of credentials as well as properties of credentialing organizations. So like a credential is a degree at a university, a credentialing organization is a university. Okay, thank you. Any any questions about the questions? Because we're also developing a similar approach for the quality assurance, and actually, I believe a group is meeting today um, <clears throat> that one of our uh, um, co-directors was leading to look at the quality assurance um, uh, aspect as well. And so again, we'll definitely give all of you these documents and you know ask for your feedback as well because we're Again, we're perfecting them through an iterative process um, based on feedback. Um, and then we will be using that to you know, gather the information or at least to kind of benchmark level set the information, although we anticipate you know, having to ask additional questions. All right, let's see here. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, on the comment on the other three apps dependent on initiatives. Um, yes. It, yeah, I think I think so, Jim. And dependent on other initi initiatives um, is a very good point. And on funding, because the funding is not enough to you know do any more than some initial design work um, now. And then I see Joel asked a question, and everybody should still be unmuted too, so feel free to, um, you know, uh, speak up as well. But let's see, how are we aligning these two emerging state national initiatives, e.g., Texas Higher Ed Coordinating Board or Colorado CC Skills Profiles? Um, I'm going to call on Bob again because I know <laughs> that. Yep. Yep. I, I, uh, what, what we uh, have been doing, and we, we're, we're going to be providing you all with the different national and state initiatives that we are aware of, by which we are now uh, documenting the different, uh, like for example, the most complex descriptor is the one on competencies, the company or learning outcomes, that's, that's, a, a, that's a property of a credential. And we're now we reviewing the different, uh, we have international frameworks, we have national competency frameworks, like qualifications frameworks. We have ONET is a really a, a, a vocabulary uh, that we have reviewed. And so we're, 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 we, what you'll see is we have identified uh, the leading mostly national, but we would love to see you all uh, provide us information on anything that you think is state level that we should look at. But we're focusing now on international and national. We're calling them competency frameworks. But they are vocabularies of competency slash learning outcomes that declare the types and relationships of learning outcomes. And we're trying to document those and lay those out just like we are exploring the type of credential as a property. So we'll be sharing that with you, but I urge you all to please mm -hmm. bring us into attention to any. Yeah, so that was really that good um, question, Joel, because to, to take um, <clears throat> yeah, w one thing that definitely Bob is very thorough and he's looking across all of these, but we do need to make sure that we're intersecting and looking across anything. So. You know, everyone in the group, please do, you know, uh, share any information you have. Don't assume we, we already have it.
it, it also, if I can mention, mm -hmm. like Lauren had mentioned with the Department of Labor, we, they also have the industry comps and models. Uh, and we have different sector national industry groups who are also working to create better harmonization. And so we, and also we have the private sector groups who are dealing with the employer side. Uh, so we're trying to align as best we can, but uh, I just want to emphasize most of what we've looked at are the national ones. And we urge, like Jimmy says, we would, after you all see what we've already looked at, Mm -hmm. We would urge you all to Yeah, and, and um, <clears throat> Stuart will touch on this, and, and um, you'll you'll be happy to know everyone that my section is about done, so we get to switch over to, <laughs> to Stuart. We're taking all that, we're doing crosswalks, and we're putting them in um, you know formats on Google Drive. They'll be real easy for everyone. We'll definitely be you know giving all of the technical advisory committee members access to all of those side-by-side -side comparisons um, and we are we've been working on that so um, <clears throat> you will be seeing that very soon so now that we all have this background information and um, you know for those of you who heard it a couple times you know again at least it was consistent, right? So we're we all have the same backstory now. You're gonna hear it, you know, if you hear us at other presentations, you'll hear the same thing over and over again. So you know we're telling the truth. <laughs> so let's talk about now our technical advisory committee and um, the purpose of the the committee, you know, is is obvious based okay. on the introductions. Every single one of the members are essential, um, and it's about collaboration and harmonization across initiatives that are developing or using um, or interested in these data models, vocabularies, and schemas. So it's really about harmonizing and working together and not reinventing the wheel. Um, <clears throat> So the TAC input, you know, as we keep talking about, is extremely vital to developing that metadata infrastructure. And we'll have, again, we'll have Stuart guiding us through that process with TAC input for developing that, then providing input onto the design of the registry and the pilot of the directory app, and then input onto the feedback of, and of design of the additional apps. So I am going to stop there and see if anybody else has any other questions. And if not, it is take it away, Stuart. I just okay. have one question about the quality assurance. Is, does that mean things like accreditation agencies and other ways that the definition of the... Well, and that's a really good question, and, and I'm so glad Bob is with us because I'm going to ask him to talk a little bit about that because I, it just made me think of we had a pilot site partner webinar right before this, and one of the questions that always comes up is, are we judging the quality? I'm not, I don't think you asked that, but I do want to say we're not judging the, the quality um, but through the quality assurance, we, we just want to have we want to have a common language for describing those quality organizations that already exist and um, uh, are, are responsible for uh, assuring the, the quality of some credentials. And I think as Carl alluded to, not everyone has that, so it does not applicable to all. But Bob, can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, just like we're trying to um, have uh, people um, communicate uh, the type of, I mean, the, the credentials in terms of a common set of properties, we also want that we have a wide variety of quality assurance entities that either uh, accredit, endorse, uh, recognize different types of credentialing organizations or credentials themselves. For example, regional accreditors many times recognize the institution, the higher education, 
and many times specialized accreditors recognize a credential, like a program, like nursing, inside of a university. We also have at least two different organizations. Uh, one of them, ANSI, uh, is in which they uh, accredit certifications, industry certifications. Uh, and then we have a variety of organizations that do recognitions of programs, including business and industry groups, who have now created lists of endorsed credentials themselves. So what we're trying to say is no matter what, no matter who you are, we need to know what are the criteria you use to endorse or to allow uh, to either endorse, recognize a credit, the processes by which you go through, and how do you communicate the status of any credential or credentialing organization with regard to your criteria and processes. So anybody in the marketplace would would know what does it mean when you accredit, endorse, or recognize a credential or a credentialing organization so that anybody can say is, I want to know what you are in a sense assuring or communicating when you do that. So that's what we're trying to do and that meeting is being held tomorrow uh, with the different uh, QA bodies to really do the same thing we have been doing with the credentials in terms of looking at all the different vocabularies for each of the properties. We are doing the same thing, which is starting a little bit later, but we just started that process maybe a few months ago, of actually doing that as well with the QA bodies. Uh, and this, the, uh, like Jeannie says, the meeting. Thanks, Bob. I hope that answered the, the question. Uh, um, that, that <clears throat> and uh, let's go ahead and turn it over to Stuart. Okay, thank you, Jeannie. Um, you may hear that I'm a little bit hoarse. I have a little cold, and I hope I can last for our remaining time. We have about 25 minutes, and uh, I'm going to try and give just an overview of the um, of basically the metadata process, the development process that uh, that we'll be following, CTI will be following. Uh, you've you've already seen a version of this um, of this figure earlier. Uh, Jan showed you um, that included uh, much more uh, information. Now I kind of boiled it down uh, to the CPI technical team, our project staff, and then the technical advisory committee, us, the TAC, and how those relate to um, uh, to some of the earlier work. So as you can see, the the, the CTI technical team will actually do um, the implementation and do the heavy lifting around um, around the work of documentation and stuff of our work uh, under our guidance, under our advice. And um, I'll be working with Ginny and others to kind of manage that, uh, manage that process. The figure also shows the prior work, the stakeholder data analysis. That's all the stuff that Bob's been talking about that, that uh, preceded um, where we are today. So, the Technical Advisory Committee is, in essence, responsible to the technical team and the implementation. The technical team is also um, the ones responsible, in the end, for the, the applications that have been specified uh, in the Lumina plan. So that's basic structure. Oops, my keyboard doesn't work the way I thought. I want to start with um, some given, some metadata design objectives that um, that flow out of the earlier work and have informed and will inform what we do. And there are five of them here. One is that the metadata infrastructure developed must conform to W3C specifications for semantic metadata, which of course means RDF, RDFS, and we're going to have a number of value vocabularies, enumerations, um, and the utilization of W3C, simple knowledge organization system, as a, as a, a consistent way for expressing uh, the, the control of vocabularies and so forth. So the first premise, the first goal here is uh, that we're working with RDF and, and leading toward 
uh, link, link data. Second, the the metadata model that we devise um, needs to be syntax independent and support an array of serializations, which is somewhat native to RDS and RDFS. Um, but that instead of us making the um, a determination of syntax and stuff up front, um, we instead uh, model and you know, on the basis of graph modeling uh, and put off. Uh, the, the serialization issues that will come into play with the apps and so forth until later, but that we support uh, as do most uh, um, RDF-based uh, environments, multiple serializations of the data. Um, the, we, want to, we want to reuse existing metadata, existing community standards wherever possible. Um, and to avoid uh, reinventing unnecessarily. Um, it's a kind of a standard uh, uh, tenet of the mixing and matching nature of, of, of RDF and linked data that, that we will work with, uh, um, with existing well-known um, uh, standards wherever we can to, insult, to support interoperability. And this next one's a big one. The metadata modeling must take into account the work of schema.org, providing the means for the CTI work or some, uh, some portion of it uh, to serve as a schema.org extension uh, for credential description. So that's a big ambition. But uh, that also, now of course, schema.org is also inherently based in RDF. Uh, it's an assertion language and uh, graph model. So, so but it does provide us with a mechanism for the utilization of, of community standards within the context of schema.org, such as uh, pre-existing framework for discussing, for describing organizations and creative works and things of that sort. Um, and then the metadata model must be informed through transparent interactions with partnering and credentialing organizations and, and feedback from stakeholders. And a number of you here on the committee are, are, are part of that effort to be, uh, to be transparent and to leverage the knowledge and expertise as Bob and the team have, been, have already demonstrated in the early work uh, of the initiative. We, want to, we need to be able uh, with the metadata that we developed to, to one on the, on the left, the poor markup, schema.org, Sort of the, so a thin description set, a relatively simple description set, uh, or that will will um, support schema.org, and then also because we'll be generating um, uh, in quotes records and so forth uh, for utilization by by the credential registry and other adopting applications, um, we might want to lead or that would lead us toward a fuller description set for richer description. So we have both of those on the table. Um, uh, with the development, for example, of LRMI, the, the thrust was toward the markup side. And the markup side is very, very important uh, given the commitments and the goals of CTI. Uh, but we also have the reality that that data in terms of record structures is going to be moving out into applications of the, uh, the learning registry and so forth, and of course the credential registry itself. Okay, here's what's in and what's out. And this relates back to, to uh, Phil and Jim and Carter's comments. Um, what's in scope is on the left, and it's primarily resource description. So it's credential issuers, credentials, um, related entities around that, um, competency frameworks, and so forth. What is out of scope are the, the interact, in, interactive aspects of, of what's on the right, um, the, the uh, verifiable claims and so forth that are raised by credential consumers and so forth in relationship to uh, credential, to assertions of credential holders. And, and Carla uh, mentioned the W3C uh, credentialing community, which is looking at a number of the issues on the out-of-scope side of, 
of, of the diagram. So our focus is, in essence, on resource description. Um, given the work that has already been done over the past, uh, I guess, almost a year, in terms of interactions with, uh, with the uh, 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 stakeholder communities and, and their data and their needs, um, there is an emergent uh, domain model emerging. And we know uh, for a fact that we have at least the following types of things that we will need to be describing. Credentials themselves, organization types, credentialing organizations that offer credentials, quality assurance organizations that recognize, endorse, and accredit those, uh, these credentials, and, um, those, and the relationship of those entities um, to things like co authored competency frameworks and other things. And then competency frameworks themselves, one of the, one of the apps is actually committed to uh, making it possible for an organization uh, to generate um, their competencies in machine-readable form. So the, the relationship between credentials and, and organizing and the organization types and um, existing competency frameworks and emergent competency frameworks are within, are within the vocabulary. And when you take a look at the, um, uh, at the questionnaire that Ginny and Bob talked about earlier, you will see that um, a, a number of properties having to do with these entities have already emerged out of the investigations, the early probing uh, by, um, by the CIT, CTI team. And so we're aware of a number uh, of control vocabularies, enumerations, that necessary to support interoperability wherever we can uh, that will also have to be um, uh, have to be rendered in machine readable form now those vocab it won't be our job to ferret out those vocabularies or to ferret out the concepts within those vocabularies that's the work that has been going on um, prior to our coming together by Bob and, and team and what the technical committee will synthesize for us from the data that they are collecting so that we, that we have synthesized data in order to make decisions and, uh, around um, classes and properties and also around um, control vocabularies, enumerations. Um, the process that we'll be using um, is one that was developed by the Devon Core uh, Metadata Initiative a number of years ago, almost a decade called the uh, Dublin Core Application Profile. It, it, it isn't rocket science. It's basically a methodical way to deal with the design of, of, of application profiles that, that, in fact, utilize properties and classes from across, uh, from across domains. Um, and the process is fairly straightforward. It, it involves functional requirements, and the evolution of the domain model. The functional requirements, as you'll see in a few moments, um, there's a fair number of functional requirements already ferreted out and available to us on the uh, technical microsite. Uh, the domain model, as I alluded to earlier, is also beginning to come into shape when we consider, if we consider a domain model being, you know, kind of a cartoon illustration of the classes of things and the relationships among those things. We're already seeing that emergent from, from the data that has been collected. The relationships between uh, credentials and, and credentialing agencies and quality assurance agencies and so forth. So there will be the development of the domain model. Again, fairly well informed from the, the, uh, uh, the um, previous work. And then development of the description set or the, the, the vocabulary itself, and then as we move down the model, increasing constraints to we, to we define record structures. In other words, to support that, um, those two goals of, of, of markup, a dictionary of terminology for markup, and then uh, more constrained uh, applications for, for record structures. So this is a way to go from the, the functional requirements 
um, uh, to a domain model that emerges from the functional requirements um, uh, to the description of properties and classes and how to document them. So the outcome component is that the, each of those stages will be documented and um, part of my responsibility is to work with the, with the technical team, um, the staff, the CTI, uh, in making sure that documentation is there and useful. So that's basically the process. It isn't, it isn't rocket science and a lot of it isn't new, um, but applying it in the context of, 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 of profiles that mix and match uh, 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 classes and properties uh, uh, is a slight deviation from our earlier, from earlier processes for developing schema and so forth. Um, the stages which we won't go into for any further. Those stages in that process uh, are each described on the technical microsite um, in some detail. And of course, I'm always available to you know, answer any questions about any of it that, you know, that does not make sense. Uh, the, pro, however, the, the, the profile or, or the, the, the DCAP um, defines a way of, of interacting, application profiles, interacting with domain community standards and the underlying foundational standards that enable the two top layers. That the, the process I was just talking about um, the, the, that looked like waterfall process, you see in the top of this illustration, functional requirements to domain model to description set to format. The, the, the one of the basic tenets of of the DCAP model is that in developing the domain model, we rely on any available um, uh, community models. And in our case, we have a community model, schema.org. So, so we, we take schema.org as, as a, a base premise in terms of, of um, core description of, of um, uh, organizations, creative works, and so forth. And then we build on top of it to achieve the unique demands of the uh, of the CTI, and then those are based on on the W3's underlying principles of <coughs> RDFS and RDF. And as you can tell, my voice is vanishing on me here. Um, the some of the work coming out of uh, uh, from Bob and 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 the team um, with exploration with stakeholders has identified a number of co of entity attributes that would need to be accommodated. There's no assumption that this this that this list is complete. It's most likely not, um, but it does give us a, a basis for uh, for being able to move forward fairly um, uh, fairly quickly. Uh, since some of this foundational work has already been done. Okay. Jeannie, I'm going to turn this over to you. Take a big and, swig of tea, hot tea. The, the <laughs> registry diagram stuff, and then I'll play. The, I'll come back on. All right. Sounds good to do. Okay. So actually, um, uh, we have some members of our tech team here, here um, who cool. will just briefly touch on this diagram. Um, with the point being this is an example diagram and we put this in here largely because in parallel with the um, metadata infrastructure um, you know process here we're going to be working on this design so um, Mike or Jerome or whoever speaking Okay, um, so what we actually have is a, uh, there's my arrow, okay. Okay, I'm not going to drag the arrow around. We have a credential re registry node and this this is the, the main node, and then it will, it, you can replicate to other credential registry nodes, and, and in, any individual organization can stand up their own node. Um, 
when they do that, um, they can, if they so desire, filter what comes into it. Um, and then communicating with the credential registry parent node is the credential registry system. That's the that's going to be the directory app that um, Jeannie alluded to earlier. There are APIs to communicate between the credential registry system and the credential registry parent node. There are also going to be APIs to communicate with third-party systems. Um, no, different organizations, like I said, can stand up their own credential registry node and there would be APIs to communicate between that. Um, I did not click over to that. So no. I will turn it over to Nate, who's going to talk about the registry system. Okay. Uh, well, real quick here, this is just kind of an idea for how a system might work that uh, is set up to interact with the uh, credential registry. Um, essentially, you would have Hey, I'm going to bring up the arrow tool here. Um, okay, there we go. Um, so you have a component here that is dedicated to communicating with the registry that's out there on the internet, um, and then you this will take care of uh, of getting data into and out of the registry, and that data will be fed into the service layer, which uh, serves as sort of a gateway to all of the data that's internal to the system. Um, everything in here is based on a common set of uh, models, uh, which are based themselves on the uh, the metadata that Stuart is working on. And uh, so, with that, we would have our directory application, and then the design eventually for the other three. Um, this system would be set up to provide a web interface for users for the directory, um, a set of APIs for um, you know, other developers and whatnot, um, and potentially a crawler application that uh, I think Jeannie can go into if she wants uh, some more detail on that one. Um, but yeah, it's this, this uh, diagram probably looks a little more complicated than it really is. Uh, basically, it's just a system that's set up to uh, pull data out of and Okay, th thanks, Nate. Industry. I think that's really, we just want to show these are yeah, examples to, that um, you know, our concepts for design. Um, getting back for a moment, though, to an earlier question about um, about third-party apps and when, you know, whether it was going to be early or late. Um, my assumption, one takeaway out of the meeting in D.C. was that um, a, a, was that third-party apps being designed against the register against uh, this data would occur as early as possible. Is that correct? Um, no, I. Uh, this is Spachi. Uh, that's my assumption, Jeannie. I don't know if uh, that's you want to comment on that. Was I not? Sorry, what was that last part, Stuart? Was I not clear? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I said I, 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 I thought maybe I wasn't clear. I was just trying to relate back to an earlier question. I can't remember who asked it about, uh, about third-party apps and, and whether, they, you know, whether it was going to be whether third-party apps interacting with oh, this data. Well, yes, I mean, it, well, our, our plan is to be as absolutely transparent as possible and put, you know, early. information out there um, uh, in an open fashion throughout this entire process. So, sure. Yeah. And, and also, uh, like we are uh, developing the, the, the directory application, but if you look at the other three application development, those are mostly to promote a community discussion with partners for developing applications in those three other families. Mm -hmm. uh, but we assume that people will want to move quickly to explore each of those three areas because those were the basically the uh, use cases that we came up with about a year and a half ago with regard to 
what different stakeholders uh, would want to use this for. But also we assume that application developers will explore other areas. And we yeah. strongly encourage that. So it's more of a uh, kind of a co-engine or, or some sort of exploration as a larger community. Yeah, thank you. So I'm just wrapping up here. So where are we now? Um, the the if we look again at the decap, the border in blue is there's been a lot of, da of data collection uh, going on uh, that informs all three of those layers and will give us a, a, a jump start in, in, in moving forward. Um, the intention is to ultimately have the credential transparency, um, uh, just the description language, be mappable from the various stakeholder data stores so that it can then be uh, uh, one shared link data and also uh, through, the, through the registry. Um, there's an emergent data model. I will not stay on this slide very long because uh, that's part of what we will be doing. But we've obviously been been doodling around uh, some of the givens, um, the, the schema.org given, the um, uh, the given givens of the intentions around some of the entities. Uh, so we've already been working on some of those. Um, there, there have been a couple questions, but sure. you know, since we are at 27 minutes after, So, yeah, so um, in closing, since we are about out of time, wow, that went by fast. Hope it went by fast for all of you as well. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions here, and Jim's question on the globally unique identifier. The, the registry existing infrastructure already has um, specifications for that sort of thing. However, it would be premature for us to say how we'll do that with the credential registry because we need to be designing it. So um, I want to leave that question open at this point and it will um, be addressed in upcoming sessions where when we're working on design. And Alexander, for an organization to have their own node, is it as simple as using a pre-existing AMI inside an AWS? Also, when issuers push credentials, is your node a candidate for receiving such a request? So, um, the, and that that's getting kind of into the, the technical weeds, and actually, if you want to know how simple it is for um, setting up a currently for setting up a rec replication node off the learning registry. If Joe is still on, he could definitely talk about that um, because I think it is pretty simple. Um, but the other part of the question would be I think the answer is yes, that when issuers push credentials into the registry, your node can be a candidate for receiving those requests. So, um, and I see Joe is, is typing. There you go. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. And if I could back up to Jim's question for a moment. Jim, I, my assumption is maybe a naive assumption at this point is that that um, given the RDF nature, given the fact that that um, that globally unique URIs will be assigned not only to entities in the model, not only to credentials and credential providers and so forth, but also to control terms wherever possible. Um, uh, although that might be a challenge when you look at, at at sets of control terms like ONET and so forth, but that that unique identification, globally unique identification. That is inherent in a, in a URI IRI. Yeah, so um, thanks for that too. <laughs> the basic point, which, all right, did, did we miss any other questions or have we tackled them all as they came along? All excellent questions, by the way. And, you know, we're, we're in the last couple of minutes here. Um, we're going to be sending everyone an email with these links. You're going to receive your invite to access things like our shared folder on Google Drive and the technical discussion group. Um, 
We're, we are planning on scribing future meetings, so you'll see information on that as well. So please know that we have a set of tools that we plan on using. Again, you know, we did a lot of talking today, <laughs> Stuart and I hogging all the time. We really intend for all the meetings not to be formatted like this, so they're more, you know, um, two-way communication here. But I want to move on to our, our next step. So we have a meeting. The CTI has a meeting set up to, it's called a collaborative launch. And so as I explained earlier, the collaborative is everyone who's participating, actively participating. So it is in Washington, D.C. Anybody in the Washington, D.C. area is welcome to come to that meeting in person. We'll be sending you um, information. If not this afternoon, you will receive it in the morning about that meeting. And then as a part of the structure of that day, there will be committee meeting time in the afternoon. And um, that should, by the way, say p.m., not a.m. <laughs> Uh, for committees to meet, so uh, we will have a technical committee meeting then. So we do expect between now and then that we will be sharing a different additional information, um, in particular the spreadsheets that, that I had mentioned to you um, to be able to go ahead and look at that ahead of the shorter committee meetings on December 1st, and we hope to see some of you in D.C. And then our other next steps are um, initiating these ongoing communications. We were thinking that the group would appreciate fewer meetings rather than more meetings, but wanted to get your input on establishing the regular call slash webinar schedule and um, what you think about that. Uh, we were thinking um, monthly, and then if we needed to have a meeting more frequently because there's just a lot going on, um, you know, scheduling an additional meeting in between, but doing it monthly rather than potentially canceling, uh, you know, a meeting, um, uh, you know, th that sort of thing. So let me know what you what you think about that, and if it's a monthly webinar. Um, is there a particular, you know, or, or any way we look at it, is there a particular day of the week, time um, that's best for everyone? We could put that out, I guess, in a doodle poll as well. But if anybody, you know, has thoughts about that, um, preferences for that, or want to talk about that now, you know, feel free to go ahead. So, this is, Hey, hey, uh, yeah, it does. The, it has a typo. The, uh, Don't ignore the, the AM. Uh, it says, I think it has a typo there on committee meetings. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, so we, we need to so clarify. Uh, the, the I think I have a current, current agenda that's changed several that. times, but it was 11.30 to 2 p.m. is what it should Yeah, so what is one? I believe it's that's 11 what's missing. It's the two. one. It's 11:30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah, it's 11:30 a.m. But we will send immediately two. following and this for those who can, you know, attend right the, both the in-person and the webinar portion of it. The information yeah. right away. Yeah. Um, there's some additional information included that is kind of a standard with the slide decks that are currently used when we're doing informational webinars. Um, but let me just stop there and see if anybody has any additional questions, comments as we close out. All right. No? <laughs> yeah, and, and thanks again, everyone, for... Um, this is way past your bedtime, isn't it, Phil? Good. Okay. It, it's not too late. It's getting there, but okay, not late. Okay, well, great. <laughs> um, thank you again, everyone. And, you know, feel free to contact, uh, certainly contact me anytime with any questions, comments, ideas, um, things we need to be aware of. 
And again, we appreciate all of you joining the Technical Advisory Committee, and we are wholeheartedly looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, all. Bye-bye. Thank you, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.